Welcome in the Digital Content Marketing Congress. My name is Steven and I'm going to talk about uh, selling without selling. And for me, it's a little bit an, a new terminology that I use and that I prefer above content marketing because I have the feeling that content marketing is, is, is put forward in a way too easy way. And I sometimes compare it with fishing without a hook. I have the feeling that a lot of companies, they, they create fantastic content, but it's like throwing your bait in the river without a hook and the fish swim by and they eat your bait and they say, I like it, and they're gone. And maybe we made it too easy in the last few years and, and maybe we need to think about what content marketing is really about. And I like to make the combination of, of content with business and that's why I like the word selling without selling. It's a form of implicit sales, creating inbound leads, but in the end to create business. So um, I want to start with, with talking about products and thinking about how valuable is our product without a story and how valuable is a product without content. And I have the feeling that a product is basically worthless without a story. And I saw this um, slide passing by on uh, the web a few uh, months ago. I don't know if you have seen it as well, but this is a picture that was taken in the, in the subway station in Washington, D.C. And you have this violin player there, a street musician, and he's standing there playing his violin, a fantastic classical piece, and uh, everybody passes him by. And the only ones who are putting money in his basket are children, asking their parents, can you please put some money in that guy's chest because he's doing a great job. And at the end, after 45 minutes of great music, he looks down and he notices that he earned $32. But what people didn't know is that this is one of the best musicians in the world who played the night before in the conference hall across the street in Washington for 2,000 people. And those 2,000 people paid between 200 and 300 dollars each to listen to exactly the same piece of music. And it really caught my attention, this one, because if you think about it, it's exactly the same product. It's the same musician, it's the same instrument, the same music, and in situation A, it's worth 32 dollars, in situation B, it's worth a few hundred thousand dollars. So if, if you take the product out of its context and if you remove the story and the content, you remove the value of it. And I think that one of our challenges is, is to create that story in an inspirational way and to make sure that we create value through our content and that we create an inspirational story that adds value and adds monetary value to the price of our, uh, of our products. And sometimes it's in, uh, it's in small things. And we, we need to get ready for a world, I think, where we have a difficulty to reach our target group. And because it will be more difficult to reach our target group, it's even more important to create that story. And, you know, a lot of people thought that Facebook was the answer to everything. A lot of people thought that the, the changes in the world and the arrival of digital media, social media, a lot of companies thought Facebook is the solution. We need to have a Facebook page and we need to put stuff on it and then we're on a roll again. But of course, we all know it, it's, it's more than that. And in fact, if you look to recent research, what we see is that on average, people want to be connected with, with only five brands. And people are on Facebook to be connected with their friends and family and not with brands. Uh, which means that if, if you look at that from a competitive point of view and you look at your own organization, it means you have two types of competitors. Imagine you're a bank. That means that you have a direct competitor, another bank, but when we're talking about getting the attention of, of customers, it's a different story. Then you have the competition of brands like Apple, Lego, Disney, all those love brands. And then it's a different ball game. So it becomes very difficult to catch the attention of our, of our consumers. And we need to take one, it one step forward. And that's the, the idea of selling without selling. We need to have the story. We need it because it will be difficult to reach our target group. But we also need to do it in a way that it creates business. And as I said, it's sometimes in, in small things. And I really love this story. This is a story of uh, a guy who, who is in the swimming pool business. He sells swimming pools in the States. But the problem is with, with that market is that it, it decreased because of the crisis. A lot of people postponed their, uh, their purchase plans of a swimming pool. And most of, of the people in the swimming pool business, they did what they used to do when they were in trouble. They went for direct advertisement advertisement, promotions, hard selling, putting the message through, through the throat of their customer. This guy did it the other way around. He said, let's, let's look at it from the consumer's perspective for a second and let's think about how 
is the decision flow of consumers who want to buy a swimming pool. And he found out that people are Googling a lot of very practical questions, things like, how do I need to clean my swimming pool? How do I need to, um, do I need a cover or not? Do I need a staircase or not? All those practical questions. And he started just answering those questions on his own site with a small blog, sometimes with pictures, sometimes with videos, sometimes with text. But he gave answers to the questions consumers typed in in Google. And today, this guy is the rising star in the swimming pool business because everybody who was Googling those questions came on his website because he was the only one who created the added value for that consumer. And he placed it on his own website. So Google loved it and people came to that site. And the moment that they wanted to buy a swimming pool, they trusted him and he was top of the list. So sometimes it's in, it's in small things. And the selling without selling concept, I think there are four components to it that, that are pretty important. And the first one is about our owned media. I think maybe we have put too much weight and too much attention in social media the last few years. And our own media, I think, is, is extremely important when it's about content and sales. We need to get people on our own platforms to create the, the business link. It's about capturing data, which is, of course, easier on your own side than on Facebook and, and on Twitter. The data can be used later on for direct actions, targeted actions that lead to business. It's also about attracting people with a mix of small and large stories, doing amazing cool stuff, but also do very small cool stuff. And of course, make it very creative and make sure that, that people like to, like to watch it and like to look at it. And there are some companies that are moving into this direction. If you look, for instance, to Kraft, Kraft is decreasing their budget in product placement in cooking shows. And instead, they created their own cooking show on YouTube. Every few days, they have a new recipe, short videos, one minute, two minutes, not half an hour. Short videos, 30, meeple, 30 million people are watching it. And of course, they're putting it on, on their website as well. This is, and on Pinterest, they create a Pinterest board with the recipes. And on their new site, and if you look to this site of crafts, I don't know if you see it, but there's something missing on the homepage. There's no product anymore on the homepage of a fast-moving consumer good company. The previous site here was just a jar of mayonnaise that stands there. And next to that, a text that said 20% less calories than the jar that we had here six months ago, which gives me or gave me no reason whatsoever to ever go back to that site. This is a different story. On this website, they, they inspire people with, with cooking. And if you like cooking, this is an inspirational site. And products are banned to the last step. If you look to the new side of Coke, Coca-Cola journey, it's exactly the same thing. The product is banned to the, turn, the third tap of the, of the site. This used to be, the homepage of Coke used to be a visual with all their SKUs, all their bottles and cans that they had. This is something completely different. This is inspirational. This is about the happiness team created in content on their website. And the other thing that's gone on the Coke site is text. My four-year-old son can look at this site in exactly the same way as we can. You don't need to be able to read to, to capture the Coke inspiration. And that's also something that you see in, in content marketing. We're evolving towards the, the Stone Age again, you know, communication with, with visuals instead of text. I don't know about you, but I don't read online anymore. I, I look online. They understood this, and they are moving, they are moving forward with that. And I think it's a completely different ballgame. To, to make sure that you inspire people, not only by, by, by the text, but by the way that you put it on your own homepage, include social media in it, of course, but this is their home base. And I think this creates opportunities to create more, uh, to create more business. And that's, I think, the, the next step. We have the inspiration, but in the end, it's about sales. In the end, people want to create a business case with their content marketing. I think in a few years, if content marketing doesn't bring in the money, they will reduce the programs. And maybe one of the companies that is doing an amazing job in that, and we don't often think about it when it's about content, but it's Booking.com. Booking.com is, and Priceline, their mother company, is, have been in the Fortune fastest growing companies for the last five years. They're the second most loved website in, in the Netherlands at this uh, moment, after Bold.com. But what they do is, yeah, they, they are selling us stuff that, by playing some small aspects of, of our decision-making process, you know? The content that they have is completely user-generated, so I trust it. 
but also the small sales aspect. I don't know if, if you try book if you tried booking.com, but it's it's a crazy feeling that if you look at a hotel at booking.com, you always have the feeling I need to order now because it's it's my last chance in history to book this hotel because there are always five or six other people watching. It's always the last room available. And I I don't even believe it, but it still works. And you know why I buy it so easily? Because there's no risk, because it's a it's free annulation for 24 hours up front. I don't need to buy an insurance for annulation or something like with the traditional tour operators. It's selling without selling in an extremely powerful way, using content to convince me, but then using small tricks to make sure that I buy stuff. And another great case that I, that I recently bumped into is the one from Panera Bread. It's a, a bakery uh, store in the US. It's also one of the fastest growing stores there at this moment. And their concept is, is fantastic. It's about a great product in the real world, a great product, which is still, of course, very important. Um, and what they also do is, is they try to link their story to, to charity, but it's charity in the line of their business. So what they created in the, the largest cities of the US are pay what you want stores. So people can walk in and they can buy a bread and they decide what they will pay. And it's, it's created for the homeless people or the poor people that they can enjoy the great quality of their bread at an affordable rate. And I like the idea because it gives inspiration. It's about the great products, but also helping the world within your line of business. And what they've noticed is that uh, <coughs> those stores, those pay what you want stores, they reach to 75% of the turnover of the other stores, which covers the operational costs. So for them, it doesn't bring in any money, but it doesn't cost them any money as well. But for the story and the content, it's fantastic. And what they also do when it's about content, they, they use their bread as, as a culinary team. You know, you, you have the wine pairing and chocolate pairing and food pairing. What they do is bread pairing. On their site, you can say, hey, I'm having friends over for dinner tonight. This is what I'm having. Which bread should I, should I give? So that you can uh, treat your friends like in the top restaurants and say, look, I have three types of bread. And I know that they fit perfectly with this course because I did it on the tool of Panera Bread. And this is selling without selling. It's content, but it also drives me to buy their bread and to try something out, something new. And the next time that I'm having friends over, probably I go to the Panera Bread pairing uh, site to check it out. And those things, I think, are, are very powerful. To, cr to create a story in the real world, like they have with their, with their charity and everything, but then create di small digital applications and small digital tools, stories, to give it a, an, an additional dimension that inspires me, that is shareable, but also drives me to, to sales. And that's, that's basically my, my idea that I wanted to share with you about selling without selling. I don't, the last question that I always have is, is how are you performing in this? And, and what I would like to, to ask you guys is to just think about these four pillars. They, they look very simple, but how well are we doing on that? If we look to our own media, is it still our website? Is it still an, a brochure or are we more like a digital magazine like Coke and Kraft are? Are we capturing data and what are we doing with that data? Are we having a mix of small and, and big stories like Red Bull? Maybe Red Bull is, is the perfect example there. On the one hand, they have those small little things going on in every country. On the other hand, they have a guy jumping from the moon to the earth and back, you know, and that's the, the mixture that, that works fine. And then the creativity. Are we having content that looks boring or are we ha creating content that looks extremely cool? And how well do we score on these four items? And do we have a link that brings in the business? That's the question that, that all of us needs to, need to wonder if we evaluate our, our current content and evolve towards content that brings in, uh, brings in business. That's what I wanted to, to share. I hope it was some food for thought. Of course, I wish you all the, back, the best with it, and thanks a lot for listening.